we saw yesterday was, was a replay of actually what happened with Obamacare. It, it was a brazen partisan abuse of power. The Democrats want to talk about anything other than the millions of people who are hurting because of Obamacare. Action taken by Leader Reid in the Senate is unrelated to uh, the implementation of, of the Affordable Care Act. The fact that Senator Reid took this action, the President uh, supported him in doing that, uh, only ensures that the President can continue to make choices about highly qualified nominees and that they can now fulfill their responsibilities on the independent judiciary or in the executive branch. This is a festival of hypocrisy on all sides. You could play anybody's speech on anybody's side, and it will always depend were you in the minority at the time or majority, and you made these imp impassioned speeches about either the majesty of the filibuster or, you know, the horror of the obstructionism. So I don't count that. But look, there are two things that have happened here. One is the actual new arrangement itself, which I think is probably okay. If you were nonpartisan, you were a Martian arising on the scene, you'd probably say it's, it's probably an improvement of the Senate that a president ought to have more control over staffing his administration. The problem, I think, is how this was done. When Cruz speaks about uh, the, this being an abuse of power and he, he makes the analogy to Obamacare, here's where the two are linked. In our history, you generally do not pass sweeping legislation like Obamacare that affects everybody, a sixth of the economy, on a straight party line of vote. Social Security, Medicare, Medicaid, civil rights, all had support across the board. Here, what happened in the Senate is analogous. They passed it with a bare majority. Now, had there been a 60 vote requirement to change the rule, that would have been better. Had there been a committee of Democrats and Republicans who thought, well, this isn't the good, no matter who's in office, and agreed on this, that would have been okay. But once you change the rules, and this one had been around for 200 years, mm -hmm. on a, a vote because you happen to be in the majority, that means there are no rules now. Because anybody in the majority can change all of the rules, and it is now a lawless place, which is exactly how this administration had been running the government in the first place. It's not new, but it is really damaging to the way our system ought to work. It's not unconstitutional or illegal, but it's constitutionally indecent. It's now anything goes. There's just nothing, there's no, now any, nobody can say, well, this is a line we don't cross, because they've shown that there's any, there's a line that nobody thought that they would cross the before. Also you need to empower it. every one of the hundred senators. It made them all much more powerful because it, it gave them the prerogative to shut everything. Now that it runs like a parliament, um, Harry Reid's the most powerful guy, but it diminishes their power. What's essentially happened is that this action has turned all the Republicans into Sicilians. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, of the problems in uh, the implementation of the website on healthcare.gov that we've experienced that has slowed enrollment uh, in the early stages here, uh, we expect that the uh, what was already going to be a backloaded process is going to be more backloaded, and that would then uh, leave insurers with a lot of data to try to sort through in a very short time. And so it is a cynical political ploy by the administration to hide the additional sticker shock, the increased costs of insurance that are going to come next year. So for them to delay from a couple of weeks before the election to a couple of weeks after the election, uh, to me, is just a, a, a naked effort. People are going to see right through this. We're going to talk about that delay to Obamacare to the next round of signups. It would have happened in October of 2014, but today we found out it's going to be 11 days after the 2014 midterm elections. Charles, coincidence? Um, there, you, you reach a point where this administration is so cynical that you almost have to admire them. I mean, the brazenness of this. And again, I repeat about Jay Carney, they don't pay him enough. For our second topic, we mark 50 years since the assassination of President John F. Kennedy. Um, thoughts about that day or his legacy since, Charles? Well, it reminds us how much our country has changed. People remember him saying, ask not. But what he also said in the inaugural address is that we will pay any price, support any friend, oppose any foe, uh, to ensure the success of liberty. There are not a lot of Democrats who would say that today. There aren't even a lot of Republicans who would say that today. And he was also the man who announced the moonshot and said we do these things not because they are easy but because they are hard. You don't hear that a lot uh, today in Washington. Everything is done because it's easy. Now, I have to tell you, for the first time 
in the history of Special Report, all three of you picked the same winner and the same loser. <laughs> So everyone picked either Harry Reid or the Democrats. We winners because we have to <laughs> winners because of of getting the nuclear short option term. passed short term, term. Um, but long term that he'll be a loser because they're going to run into a gang of Sicilians. <laughs> <laughs> and Charles, by the way, says save the nasty tweets. It's all it, in good humor. All, we love Sicilians. Yeah. This has been a Sunfish production.